the first thing I'm going to do is show you how we get the camera to be all set up for the GigaPan before we turn on the GigaPan unit. Let's pretend that the whole unit is on a tripod, so it has a little quarter inch screw down here. Assume that it's on your tripod and maybe you're at the brink of the Grand Canyon and there's an incredible storm system coming and you want to get that GigaPan really fast. So we're on a tripod. Now when we're on that tripod, everything is powered down on the robot so we can still twist this around and we can still turn here. And while we can still do all of that, it's a great idea to go ahead and set up the camera the rest of the way. Now there's three things that we have to do to the camera to be able to take the picture. The first thing we got to do is zoom it in all the way because of course we want maximum resolution. So I'm now zoomed in all the way and I just stuck my hand under the finger which goes up and down freely. Every once in a while I'm going to push the shutter halfway down. Now the reason is the screen will go blank every three minutes if I don't do anything to the camera. And I'm talking to you so it's going to be kind of slow going. And if I don't keep doing that once in a while to reset that three minute timer, when the screen goes blank, this is going to be horrible sounding, but when the screen goes blank, anything I've done to fix the focus or fix the exposure is lost. So now, we've zoomed in all the way. The next thing that I usually think about when I'm taking a GigaPan is, do I want to fix the focus to one focus position, or do I want to let it deal with autofocus as it goes through the panorama? I'll only let autofocus be on if I have things at significantly different Im image distances in the actual panorama and therefore I have to have different focus points. Otherwise, if things are more or less the same distance away, I like to nail the focus so that I get the most sort of sharp picture that I can get. I'm going to go ahead and point it at the books so I can read the spines of the books and I'm going to fix the focus there. The way you do that is you press the shutter halfway down with one hand and with the other hand you push on the flower mountain icon. And when you do that, Notice this little iconography that appeared here, AFL, Auto Focus Lock. Basically that means focus lock. So the focus is now locked, and as long as I keep pressing this halfway down once in a while, it'll stay locked. Now, exposure is something you have to lock. It's very important, because if you don't lock the exposure, as the camera moves about taking the panorama, when it's looking at the blue sky, it'll turn down the exposure. When it's looking down at the dark tree, it'll turn up the exposure. That same part of blue in the sky will look white and bright in some pictures and dark and blue in others. And the stitcher will have a hard time making one good looking picture out of the resulting quilt or patchwork of images. So you really have to decide what you need to be well exposed and you have to lock the exposure on that. And so I'm going to point at the books on the bookshelf, press halfway down and press the ISO, the top of the donut. And what turned on is AEL, Auto Exposure Lock. So now the camera is completely locked. It's going to have the same focus, the same white balance, and the same exposure across the entire panorama. But now we're going to finally turn on the actual GigaPan robot. So let's go down to the GigaPan robot. To turn it on and to turn it off, you hold down the OK button. So I'll push down the OK button. It'll turn on. It says Global Connection, version 0.32. So the firmware I'm showing you is version 0.32. Immediately there's a selection of uh, menus, New Panorama, if I use these buttons up and down, you can see the different options. 360 panorama, last panorama, options, and uh, GigaPan setup, and that's it. Let's run you through some of the menus that you won't be necessarily using this first time, just so you have an idea what the options are. New panorama is what you're going to use by and large whenever you're making a new panorama, so it's the most common thing you're going to do. So you're going to hit OK right away and do that. 360 panorama is a special mode that automatically does a 360. Last panorama remembers what the uh, overall size of the previous panorama was and tries to repeat that. In options, we're going to hit OK and show you some options. Time per picture uh, is one option. Battery status is another option. Factory reset is another option. Expert options is another option. I'm not going to talk about those. Time per picture is pretty important. Let's hit OK on that one. Right now it's set to 1.7 seconds. What that means is the GigaPan is going to take a picture and wait 1.7 seconds before moving to the next position and taking the next picture. That's a useful number to be able to adjust because let's say you're in dark conditions and so your exposure is going to be quite long. And furthermore, in dark conditions, because the exposure is long, nothing should be moving when the shutter starts hitting. So once you push the shutter, you want there to be no motion so you don't have any blur because the exposure is long. The shutter is, is open a long time. In cases like that, what I'll do is I'll actually turn the timer on on the camera to like 5 seconds or 10 seconds. And I'll set the time per picture to something like 12 seconds even. And what will happen is 
when you press the shutter on the camera, the camera will then count down from 5 seconds or 10 seconds. By the time it gets to zero and takes the picture, nothing's moving, so you have very little blur. So you have a nice crisp picture in dark circumstances. And then the camera, I'm sorry, the robot, is waiting that whole time and will wait that full 12 seconds or 15 seconds or whatever you program before going to the next position and taking the next picture. So that's what time per picture is all about. 1.7 seconds is just fine for this relatively bright environment. So I'll hit OK. Time per picture is set. The next one I want to show you is battery status. This is totally useful. I'm going to hit OK on that. And it says battery is good, 8.3 volts. Anything above 7.5 or 7.8 is quite good. 8.3 is fantastic. Anything above 8 is outstanding. And there's actually a little battery icon on the bottom right here that will turn on when the batteries are dying in the normal panorama mode. But this is a nice way to check your batteries out. So I'll hit X, get out of that. Factory reset, we're not going to do it. Expert options, we're not going to do it. Uh, and that's it. So that's it for options. Uh, now I'm going to show you something you should never do. If you try and force the camera, it sounds bad. So don't do that. That's a bad sound. I'll do it one more time just for camera. Don't do that. That's bad. Okay. So I've locked the exposure and the focus again. I want to show you how GigaPan setup works. Different cameras are going to have a different field of view when you're all the way zoomed in. And the robot needs to know what the field of view is so it can move the right number of degrees between pictures. That's what GigaPan setup is all about. Now it remembers these values when you turn it off and on again. So you won't have to reset these over and over again for your specific camera. And by the way, for this camera, a perfectly good value is like 10 degrees. So moving 10 degrees between pictures is great. So let's hit OK on GigaPan setup. It says current FO view, 10.0 degrees. What did I tell you? And it says uh, set up camera field of view. I'm going to say sure. I'm going to hit OK and set it up because it's kind of fun to see how it works. So it says set to full zoom, then press OK. We are in full zoom, so I'm going to hit OK. Then it's going to say use buttons to align horizon with the top of the camera screen. So we'll use the up and down button to move something. In this case, I'm going to just use the shelf over there in my bookshelf with the top of the screen. And press OK when done. Reference set. Use buttons to align horizon with bottom of camera screen. And then press OK. This is great because what's going to happen is I'm just going to move the camera until that same landmark is on the bottom of the screen. And you'll notice here it says 12.9 degrees. So it's 12.9 degrees from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen. So 10 degrees is a nice conservative number. In fact, I'm going to back off to about 10 degrees. There's 10.8 degrees. That's pretty good. I'll hit OK. So that's kind of neat. You can use your own camera to calibrate the field of view to exactly what your camera provides you with.